Why did Qui-Gon Jinn lose to Darth Maul? Qui-Gon Jinn was widely respected within the Jedi Order for his deep wisdom, strong connection to the Force, and his unorthodox yet thoughtful approach to the Jedi teachings. He was committed to what he believed was right, even when it went against the Council's decision, further highlighting his independent spirit and earned him great respect from both his peers and pupils. Being one of the Jedi's best, he still lost to Maul, but why? Let's break it down and first by looking at their fighting styles. Qui-Gon Jinn was a practitioner of Form 4 of lightsaber combat, also known as Ataru. This form is characterized by its focus on agility, acrobatics, and using the force to enhance physical abilities. Ataru is highly dynamic, involving swift, powerful strikes, and it relies heavily on the practitioner's physical fitness to execute its acrobatic maneuvers effectively. This form is specifically useful in open spaces, where its practitioner can fully utilize their mobility and agility. However, the effectiveness of Ataru diminishes in confined spaces, where the practitioner's movements is restricted. The duel with Darth Maul occurred in a relatively confined and complex environment, which would have limited Qui-Gon's ability to leverage the full advantages of Ataru. At the time of this duel with Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn was an older Jedi, which could have impacted his physical prowess. While he remained a powerful and skilled Jedi, his age might have played a role in reducing his stamina and agility, crucial aspects for effective Ataru practitioners. In contrast, Darth Maul was younger in his physical prime and his combat style was tailored to capitalize on his physicality and aggression. Maul was trained by Darth Sidious, who instilled in him not just the skills of a Sith warrior, but also a deep-seated hatred for the Jedi. The training included not only physical combat skills, but also the harnessing of dark side energies. Maul's combat effectiveness was further enhanced by by his intense focus, determination, and his ability to channel his anger and aggression into his fighting. Darth Maul used Form 7, known for its ferocity and demanding physicality, coupled with his youth and stamina, gave him an advantage in a prolonged duel. Qui-Gon's age and the physically demanding nature of Ataru could have led to fatigue, reducing his combat effectiveness over time. Darth Maul was also very tactical. The tactical advantage in Darth Maul's duel with Qui-Gon Jinn highlights the significance significance of the environment and setting in their confrontation. The duel takes place in the Theed Palace on Naboo, specifically within the reactor room filled with narrow walkways, large gaps, and numerous obstacles. The setting played a crucial role in the outcome of the duel for several reasons. The reactor's room layout with its separate platforms and barriers allowed Maul to effectively isolate Qui-Gon from his apprentice, Obi-Wan Kenobi. This isolation was critical as it prevented the Jedi from supporting each other and turned the battle into two separate one-on-one -on -one duels. Maul, therefore, did not have to face the combined strength of two Jedi at the same time. Maul's fighting style, which is acrobatic and aggressive, was well suited to the reactor's room's complex structure. He could use the environment to his advantage, moving swiftly and unpredictably across the platforms. His ability to adapt and utilize his surroundings gave him an edge over Qui-Gon, who was more accustomed to open and straightforward combat settings. Next, I would like to focus on the mental and emotional factors influencing Qui-Gon Jinn during his duel with Darth Maul. Qui-Gon Jinn, unlike many of his peers in the Jedi Order, was known for his deep spiritual connection to the Force and somewhat unconventional approach to the Jedi teachings. This philosophical mindset often led him to ponder the large implications of events and actions. During the events of the Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon encountered several significant developments that likely occupied his thoughts. The Prophecy of the Chosen One Qui-Gon strongly believed that Anakin Skywalker was the Chosen One, destined to bring balance to the Force. This belief was not widely shared or supported by the Jedi Council, potentially putting Qui-Gon at odds with the Council's views. The weight of the his discovery and his responsibility towards Anakin might have been a significant distraction. The reemergence of the Sith. The appearance of Darth Maul marked the first confirmed encounter with the Sith Lord in centuries. This revelation would have been a cause of great concern for Qui-Gon, as it signaled a significant and dark shift in the cosmic balance. The implications of the Sith's return would not only be a matter of immediate personal danger, but also a profound existential threat to the Jedi Order and the galaxy. Personal responsibility 
and legacy, Qui-Gon's role as a mentor to Obi-Wan Kenobi and his potential role as Anakin's master would have also weighed heavily on him. The sense of responsibility towards his current and future apprentices, especially in such turbulent times, could have been a source of deep contemplation and concern. These factors combined with the immediate stress of the battle could have affected Qui-Gon's focus and performance against Darth Maul. In high stakes combat, even a minor distraction could be the difference between victory and defeat. Qui-Gon's depth of thought and concern for the bigger picture, while one of his greatest strengths, might have also been a vulnerability in a situation that required complete focus on the immediate physical and tactical challenge at hand. Looking at the combat styles, tactics that were evolved, and the emotional thoughts and feelings, we could see how a respected Jedi Master like Qui-Gon Jinn could have fallen to the Sith Lord Darth Maul. But what do you guys think? Do you think Qui-Gon Jinn should have beaten Darth Maul on Naboo? Let me know in the comments below.